everyone, my name is Kelly Kynard. I am the Youth and Family Programs Coordinator here at Historic Columbia. And I am back again with another fun educational activity that you guys can try at home. So today we are going to be talking about historic games and how kids played games in the past and how you can kind of create or imitate those games at home. So one of the first games that I want to show you is something called Pickup Stick. And as you can see, this game is made out of a bunch of wooden sticks. They almost look like barbecue skewers. Um, this game is actually still pretty popular today, so you might have a similar version of this at home. Your sticks might be plastic or they might be different colors. But if you don't have this game at home, one, um, some of the different materials you can use to make this game at home are um, if you have barbecue skewers. That's one material there. Um, you can use those to create your pickup sticks. You um, if you have a pack of pencils, hopefully you're being diligent with that e-learning, so you got some spare pencils laying around. You can uh, bring all those pencils together to, um, co and combine those to make pickup sticks. You can also go outside and find sticks from trees and twigs from trees. Kids in the past, if they were un unable to afford or make sticks like this, would have done just, done just that and gone outside and picked up their own sticks to use for their game of pickup sticks. So you really will be kind of living in the past if you use that option. So how you play pick up sticks is you're going to take your sticks and you're going to make a messy pile, kind of like this. Ah. So you're going to try and take a stick out of your pile without moving any of the other sticks. If you move a stick, especially if you're um, playing with a group, you're going to have to put that stick back. But if you're able to take a stick out, Without moving the other sticks, you're able to hold on to that stick, and whoever has the most at the end wins. So, I don't know, I don't think anything moved. You have to call me out. Oh, I'd have to put it back. So, um, you go through and take turns until you run out of sticks, and that is pick up sticks. Another game that I have for you guys, um, if you can kind of see these here, we have marbles. Um, these are kind of our old historic version of marbles. If you are familiar with marbles today, they are generally made out of glass. Um, so obviously that game is still popular today and you can usually find those in the store. If you don't have glass marbles at home though, there's a couple of different options on how you can make those at home. If you see here, I have got a case of Play-Doh or I've got clay -Doh, or excuse me, Crayola's air dry clay. Um, both of these are great options. You just grab yourself a piece of Play-Doh or clay, roll it together to make a ball, and you let that sit for about an hour or so. Make sure it's dried nice and hard, and you've got yourself a set of marbles. When you play marbles, um, it's best played outside, so maybe you could draw a line, a circle in the dirt, or maybe um, use some chalk to draw a circle on your driveway or sidewalk. You're going to put all your marbles except for one in the middle, and you're going to try and knock your marbles out of the circle. So you're going to try and roll it and knock them out. So I didn't knock any marbles out of the circle, so I wouldn't get any marbles to count as a point. But let's say one did roll out of the circle, I would hold on to that. And whoever you're playing with would take a turn, and they would try and do the same. If they knocked a marble out, they would also be able to hold on to that marble. So whoever has the most when you run out of marbles at the end wins. Now, if you're not able to play outside, let's say it's raining, you could easily make a little barrier inside. Maybe you could use a, um, a towel or a wash rag and try to knock the marbles off of that. So that is how you play marbles. Now another game that we have, this one's a little bit more complex than the two we've already looked at. This is called ball and cup. Um, that is the name is, or the directions are in the name. You try and get the ball in the cup. Now this one um, required a little bit more skill to make. It's not something you can go out in your backyard and find. You see here, you probably needed somebody with some good work, woodworking skills, maybe a carpenter who could make this back then, or who had the tools to make this. So in the past, this game probably would have been a little harder, to, or would have definitely been harder to make, but probably would have cost a little bit more. So if you have been learning about the different social groups in school, um, you'll know that some of the social groups that would have been able to afford or play this game would have been the middle class or the elite class. So not everybody would have been able to be, play ball and cup. But today we want to make sure everybody can, so we have a really unique way that you can make a ball and cup at home. You've got some simple tools here, some, um, some supplies you can find around the house. 
I have a little um, Dixie cup that maybe one of the little cups that you use when you're brushing your teeth or inside your mouth. You could always use a plastic cup from home as well. I've got another um, barbecue skewer stick. If you don't have that, you can also use um, a pencil instead. And I've got some string with a bead tied to the end. If you don't have any string or yarn at home, you can always use an old shoestring. Um, and maybe instead of a bead, right here I have a uh, square bead. If you don't have any extra beads laying around, maybe you could use some buttons from a shirt instead as well. So you can definitely get creative with these supplies. You don't have to have everything here, but you can find different ways to make this at home. So for ball and cup, as I mentioned earlier, the instructions are in the name. You want to get the ball in the cup. So you're going to swing your ball or bead and try and get it in the cup on the first try. <laughs> so um, again, these are some of the historic games that kids would have played in the past. And I want you guys to try and put your own modern spin on it and get creative and see if you can make and play these games at home. And make sure you keep watching throughout the week. We've got some other cool videos uh, lined up for you guys.